Hi, in this video I'm going to take a look at watercolor paints made with PY150 Nickel Azo Yellow. I'll talk about why it's my go-to recommendation for a primary mixing yellow and the one I reach for most often in my palette. I'll swatch and compare paints made with a single pigment color as well as show you plenty of brand made convenience mixtures all containing PY150. At the end I'll put those colors to use in a demonstration painting. Unlike some pigment numbers that have a lot of variation in color, there is very little difference in hue between brands of PY150. If you notice any color differences between the swatches, that mainly has to do with pigment load. Since the pigment looks brown in higher density, you can see that even brands that seem to be a lighter yellow at first can still be layered to reach that rich brownish mass tone. All of these paints were swatched from dry for a fair comparison regarding rewettability and ease of picking up a saturated load of color with a wet brush. My favorite brands of PY150 include Da Vinci and Sennelier for their ability to create gradient washes from dark to light that look incredibly smooth. I also like Roman Schmal's version for the intensely deep mass tone it is capable of with minimal scrubbing from the dry pan. White Knights is one of the most affordable versions and is quite acceptable for painters on a budget. The biggest difference I found between brands was in regard to their binders and how that influences blending smooth gradients or having a predictable flow. If you are a fan of Core Watercolors by Golden, you may enjoy the unusually fast flow across wet paper that their unique Aquazold binder provides, because this can give unpredictable results that don't always lend themselves to precision, I don't usually include Core in my personal palette. Winsor & Newton, Rembrandt, and Schmincke were slightly harder to re-wet from dry samples than other brands, resulting in them looking slightly lighter in color on my swatches. Though not shown here, I also wanted to note that M. Graham makes a strong version that I just don't often reach for because that brand is heavy handed with their honey usage. That extra honey means the paint is always sticky and can mean extra work mixing their paint with water for a smooth streak free application. Mission Gold, Holbein, and Shinhan tend to lack flow or sit exactly where you put them in wet washes, which is a normal traditional trait of most Asian made watercolors. I did notice an oddity though with Mission Gold's version, where my swatch turns slightly greenish on paper over time. Since it was the only brand I have ever seen a color shift issue with, I avoid using that one for professional art. When PY150 is mixed with Thalo Blue, it creates a natural looking range of olive to grass greens ideal for botanical artwork. Many brands make their catalogs look more robust, particularly with a variety of leaf greens and autumn-like reds, by including up to 10 different convenience mixtures made with PY150. This indicates that they too know that Nickel Azo Yellow is a great choice for creating your own favorite convenience mixtures. Its strong tinting strength means a little paint goes a long way, and it's one of the most light fast and transparent yellow pigments available. When diluted, it's closer to a traditional middle-of-the-road primary mixing yellow. It's not a replacement for the cool bright yellows like Cadmium PY35 or Lemon Light PY175, but when watered down, PY150 is a very close match for Winsor & Newton's Lemon Deep PY159 and an excellent replacement for the Fugitive Oriolan PY40. Being so transparent, non-granulating, and staining, it performs forms particularly well for glazing techniques or layering for deeper values. Most companies use Nickel Azo Yellow for replicating an old discontinued pigment called Quin Gold P049. You may have heard about this color because it was well loved by many artists and once it stopped being manufactured, a lot of people were looking for similar replacements. At this point, the similar mixture should be called Quin Gold Hue, meaning a replica or look-alike for a different pigment, but only Schmincke seems to be good about indicating that. I ended up testing out so many PY150 based colors for a few reasons. Sometimes they are included in a tube or pan set assortment, but as my go-to primary mixing yellow, I also seek it out individually. 
If I'm testing out a few paints from a new brand, I usually pick up a primary trio in addition to a couple rare or unique pigments exclusive to that company. When setting up a new palette, PY150 is almost always the first yellow I add. I love that it has a tendency to mix realistic leaf greens that are less artificial looking than starting with a bright lemon yellow or a thalo green. When used sparingly, Nickel Azo Yellow can also add a coral-like warmth to pink colors. Another reason I ended up with so many PY150 watercolors is when I started watercoloring, I collected colors, not pigments. I would buy any color I thought was pretty. I hadn't thought about pigment ingredients very much until looking at my collection, I saw how many of them had the same number code on the label. While a lot of these brand mixtures are beautiful, and I enjoyed them as a beginner, I currently prefer the process of mixing my own colors. If I find that I'm constantly recreating the same mix for multiple paintings, I'll squeeze out a little bit of the tube paint to stir into a full pan cup. I'll label it with a rough ratio of pigment numbers used for creating my ideal leaf green, so I don't have to remix little puddles of it each time I paint. Overall, I find it easier and cheaper to have simplified things down to owning a smaller collection of single pigments for my palette. I will be making a pigment spotlight video for each color in my personal palette, but in the meantime, you can find my written list on my website at kimcrick.com. I will put a link to that recommended light fast pigments list, my online swatch card database, rubber stamps, and any of the other art supplies I used in this video in YouTube's description section below. For me, PY150 is irreplaceable and I appreciate it every time I use it. It can create natural looking sunlit foliage colors and interestingly textural mixtures when paired with granulating PB29 ultramarine blue or earthy green PG17 chromium oxide. Other warm mixtures created with PY150 also remind me of vintage Art Nouveau poster paintings, which inspired this little demonstration. I use Sennelier's watercolors for this piece, which blend and layer particularly smoothly. I'd love to hear if you have a PY150 in your palette, your favorite brands, mixtures, or art uses for it. Let me know in the comments. Happy painting!
If you'd like to see more, you can find all of my detailed swatch card images, results from my independent Lightfast testing, and other art supply reviews on my website. I'm currently building a huge pigment database where thousands of colors can be compared side by side with paint from other brands. Updates about this project, along with line art drawings and high res color scans, are also available on Patreon. Thanks for watching.